Hey everyone, how you doing? I hope this video finds you well and everything is good in your life. As a lot of you know, I've been infatuated with this new app called Calipeg. It's a full-on animation app that's available in the Apple App Store. This is a part two of my learning Calipeg adventure. The first video that I did, that I will link right there, we took a look at the interface and didn't really get into animating all that much. But I've been using Calipeg for a paid project which there's some people in my comments that are talking about that you can't use iPad for professional work. I'm gonna prove you wrong. I'm not trying to troll, I'm just letting you know the iPad is way better than you think it is. So I'm gonna show you guys what I've been working on in Calipeg right after the intro. Welcome back. I wanna show you guys what I've been working on and it's only going to be a part of the project because this is a paid project and I don't wanna get in trouble with my client, but this is such a small part of the bigger project that it doesn't really matter. So let's take a look. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hit play and I can go up to the top middle here or I can just four finger tap and we see that this lava lamp is alive. I'm going to create a new layer by tapping this icon here and then I'm going to double tap that first frame. If you double tap in that frame you get a little white square in there and that's called the sheet. So what I'm going to do is before I ruin anything I'm going to come down here to this layer hit this hamburger menu and lock that because I don't want to accidentally ruin anything there. And there's so many new things that I've learned while playing with this app that are so incredibly helpful. Number one, two finger tap, or you can use the same two fingers on the same hand. You get this floating menu. So if I'm coming in here and I'm drawing, let's say I'm making this. If I tap this brush, it'll clear that frame. If I scrub on these arrows, I'm able to flip through the animation, but seeing that this layer only has one frame, it's only going to flip that one frame. Whereas if I come down here and then scrub, we're able to get through all of those frames. And again, just to be thorough, in this floating menu, we have copy and we have paste but we've already talked about that. So let's go ahead and make that go away. Okay, and with this one, in the first video, I wasn't 100% sure why anyone would want the onion skinning available while you're scrubbing through. And as a refresher, three fingers up and down, you're able to flip through the animation. Some of the functionality that I found super helpful that at first I didn't truly understand was being able to flip through your sheets and have onion skinning on. I'm gonna first make sure that I am on the correct layer. I'm gonna come up to the settings and where it says scrubbing disables onion skin. I want that to be turned off and then I'm gonna come over here and make sure that onion skinning is turned on. So then let's say we're drawing a cartoon character. And let's just say that we wanna make him blink. So I'm gonna three finger tap and drag up. And this is what the previous frame was showing. So what I'm gonna do is, and if you notice down here in the timeline, there was a sheet was automatically created for us. Probably a smarter way to do this. I'm gonna double tap and then delete that frame. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in on the timeline. I'm gonna to go to the beginning. Now that this frame is green, I'm just gonna stretch that out a little bit. And then I'm going to take and erase his face. Then I'm gonna lock this layer, create a new layer. And here is where we're gonna give him a face. And if you're using an Apple Pencil, this is the Apple Pencil too. If I double tap on that magic spot on the Apple Pencil, it'll go from brush to eraser and back. Similarly, if I'm drawing with my brush, if I hold my finger down, it turns it into an eraser. 
and then when I lift my finger, it goes back to a brush. So let's go ahead and do the three finger tap and drag up. Oh, you know what I forgot? Turn on onion skinning. Okay. And now if we four finger tap, we can see our animation going. So in my first video, I didn't know what some of these icons did. And thanks to people like Doug Fur on Instagram, you guys helped me figure out what these icons did. So what I'm gonna do is tap this hamburger menu, go up to select all sheets. Then I'm gonna tap on those sheets and then drag up, duplicate with content. Without picking up my pencil, I'm gonna drag down and now it made a complete copy of those frames. But what I'm gonna do is tap, tap, and drag. Remember, tap, tap, drag. That's one that you have to get used to. It just, it just is. Once you get it a couple times, keep practicing that. It's, my friend Jack has been struggling with that one. Oh, and the, and the cut the frame one, we'll do that here in a little bit. So what I'm gonna do now is, now that I have these next four frames selected, I'm gonna, tap and drag up and tap on invert. Now I'm gonna four finger tap to play. And now we have him blinking, but we have too much head background. So what I'm gonna do is four finger tap to stop. I'm going to unlock this. And this is specifically for you, Jack. What I'm gonna do is come over here to this layer and just within that sheet, make sure that you're tapping your pencil on the sheet itself. Just drag down and it'll split that clip. Now I'm able to double tap on this, tap, drag up, and then go to the trash can. So then if we go back to the first frame and hit play, one thing to keep in mind while you're working in Calipag is this. I'm gonna create a new layer. I'm gonna come over here to the very first frame I'm gonna double tap. And just for kicks, I'm gonna draw, I don't know, let's do hair. Hide this layer and I'm gonna hide this layer. If I double tap to make that sheet green and then hit play, it doesn't look like anything is animated. And that's because you have that one frame selected. If that's what's happening, you need to deselect that frame. There we go, now it's white. I'm going to make this visible and make this visible again. And then when I hit play, so if you're trying to review your animation and it's only showing that one frame, take a look at that. Make sure that that one sheet is not turned green on accident. This is something that's really neat and it might make sense the more I play with this app. What I'm gonna do is hide the timeline. Now if I'm manipulating the canvas, you see this whole zoom angle thing that shows up? What I'm gonna do is get that to show up and I'm gonna tap. And now you see I can manually enter a percentage for how much canvas I want to have zoomed in on. Let's just see what happens if we enter 50, hit return. There we go. And then angle, I don't know, let's do minus 90, hit return. And that's not gonna do anything to your animation. All it's doing is it's rotating the canvas and zooming in the canvas. It's not affecting your animation at all. It's basically you trying to find a good angle to get that perfect curve down or line or whatever. You know what I'm talking about. The fast way to get to the default view of the timeline is just to spread your fingers real fast like this. So do like this, there we go. If we wanted to adjust the opacity of a layer, obviously we can come over here to the 100 and if we drag to the left, the opacity starts to go away. And if you drag it to the right, it comes back. A fast way to do that, if you tap that 100, you get the number pad and we're able to manually set that to a certain percentage. Now let's talk about this wonderful magnet tool. In the first video, I wasn't completely convinced that this was going to be helpful, but upon further review, it's really helpful. Check this out. Now that we have all of these sheets on this unnamed layer, take a look at this magnet right here. It's got the yellow tips. That means that the magnet tool is activated. If I click on it again, it's deactivated. If I have it deactivated, and I wanted to tap, tap, drag, and then move these sheets off to the side. You see where there's a gap in between there? And also what you can do is double tap, 
and resize sheets. And those little gaps will remain there. So now let's do that same thing, but with the magnet tool turned on. I have the magnet tool turned on. And now if I double tap, you see how resizing that sheet had everything moved to the right? Similarly, I can take that and move it to the left. And because the magnet tool is turned on, everything comes with it. Whereas if we turn that off and then drag, it'll move everything to the right. But if I move to the left, now you're starting to see those gaps. So that functionality can be very helpful when you're trying to do your in-betweens and even the timing of your animations. So let's say that this is the timing that I want. I'm going to select all sheets, tap and hold that magnet until everything gets sucked right in. It's like Tiger King. You start messing around with Tiger King and you get sucked right in. And then after, what was it, 12 episodes, then you're just lost and you're trying to figure out what the hell you did with your life. There's a lot of hidden pinching functionality within Calipeg. Let's say I wanted to rename this layer something with a really long name. Okay, you see how that layer gets truncated? If I two finger spread, I'm able to see the really long name just a little bit better and all of those icons go away. It might be handy to do spread your fingers like that if you don't need to manipulate that layer anymore. So that way you don't accidentally tap the opacity or even the onion skinning icons. So to fill the shape, what you do is you double tap and it'll fill that shape. And if you notice, I'm gonna undo that, double tap and you notice the slider here. Now I can drag that to the left or right and actually affect the, basically the anti-aliasing of that shape. But if you look here, you can see that there's a lot of really weird things happening to the edge of that brush stroke. So what I'm gonna do is undo, I'm gonna create a new layer. I can even name this line art. I'm gonna come down here, double tap, base color, hit return. And now if I double tap, it's going to fill the shape according to the other layer. I'm going to do that again because this time I want to take this and drag it down and I want to get that sweet spot. There we go. So that way the fill doesn't affect the line layer as much. This functionality is very helpful because you might have your line work just dialed in and it's perfect. What you don't want to do is have the color layer affecting those really nice brush strokes that you put down. So you have your colors on a completely different layer. Not to mention, we've talked about this approach for other software and it's very apropos here too, where in case you have say a shirt and you only want to change the color of the shirt, well, all you have to do is go to the shirt layer and color that and it won't affect anything else. I want to show you guys my little glob, four finger tap. And you see that's the lava within the lava lamp. I'm going to then turn this back on and we can see now that this is our lava lamp again. Welcome back, old friend. Let's get into importing images. There's a couple ways to do it. First, I'm gonna create a new layer and let's name that lamp. I'm gonna to go to the first frame, double tap to create a new sheet, double tap that sheet to turn it green. Now I'm gonna tap and swipe up, go to import. I'm going to the photo album I'm gonna tap on the image that I want. And now we see that our lava has the lamp. So that's the first way to do it. You create a new layer, create a new sheet, and then import it. Let's take a look at the other way to do it. I'm gonna actually go up here because I don't want this to be affected. I'm gonna lock that layer down. 
and you see these little hash marks here that's just showing you that you're not going to be able to affect that layer until you unlock it all right we're going to come to our lamp layer i'm going to two finger tap and hold until that floating menu shows up i'm going to hit the brush and now that lamp is gone now what i'm going to do is swipe i already set this up before i had my photos kind of sitting off to the side but i didn't want this video to be so long by me showing you guys how to have floating applications and stuff i'll do that stuff in another video so now that i have the photos up what i'm going to do is tap on the image that i want i'm going to drag to calipeg and you see that little green see that little green plus sign that's what we're looking for now i'm going to let go and now it's in place. Now I can take my Photos app, swipe out of the way. I can manipulate this image now by rotating and resizing, but I set up the file in a way where I don't need to do a lot of resizing. Everything is the same size. I wanna go back to the gallery because I don't think we talked about this in the previous video. The more you use Calipeg, the more animations you're gonna have sitting in your gallery. So you want to double tap to rename, and this is Lava Lamp. So from here, I can swipe left and I can rename, I can copy, I can export, I can clean up. There may be some times where your Calipeg file gets a little corrupted for whatever reason. If your Calipeg file is acting up, hit that little icon and Calipeg will go through and try and iron out any wrinkles that are there. I've never had to use that and I've created quite a few animations already but just in case that's there. Okay, let's make a duplicate of this project. So there's lava lamp, lava lamp one, and just for kicks, let's duplicate again. Now that we have multiple files, I'm able to tap and hold, and you see how it turns red? Now what I'm gonna do is drag this over to here, and we can say lava, lava lamps, hit return, and now I have a grouping. This comes in handy if you're working on one animation with a bunch of different scenes. You can create all the scenes in completely separate files and then just group them together. That's super handy. Thank you, Calipeg. And same thing, we can tap into here, grab Lava Lamp, make it turn red, come up here to the name, and then if we tap out, that's how you move it out of the group. And I can also come in here and do the same thing with this one. And now I'm gonna swipe left and delete. Okay, those are my latest findings while dealing with Calipeg. I hope you learned a lot. I hope you had fun. I hope you could see that you could actually work on professional level stuff on an iPad. And I think it's only obvious that I'm a big fan of this app. I'm so much of a fan of Calipeg that I reached out to the folks at Calipeg and even Travis Blaze. This Thursday, the 16th, I have Travis Blaze coming to talk about his career and his involvement with Calipeg. You guys should check that out if you go to youtube.com slash sketch zone podcast. Otherwise, when we're done recording that show, what I'll do is I'll link that show in this video somewhere. And then the actual creator of Calipeg agreed to come on the show. We're trying to figure out the date and time for that too. So please stay tuned for that. I hope you had fun learning and drawing with me. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. And if you know anyone else that's trying to get into animation or animating on the iPad, send this video on over to them. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm coming out with content every week and it's content that has to do with animation and filmmaking. I'll probably be getting into photography and stuff like that. This channel for me is like a creative outlet. So as I create projects, I'm bringing you guys along with me. Okay guys, that's it for me. I'll see you guys in the next video. Okay.